you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Lady Writer, the first verse and the first chorus. We're going to spend a little bit of time looking at how uh, Mark Knopfler does that kind of rhythm part. It's really tasty. It sounds lovely. So let's get to a close up and check out what he's doing. Let's start off with this little verse and uh, have a look at what's going on. The actual chord sequence is A, which you can just play with the first finger using a little mini bar, making sure that you don't play the thinner string or that you lift your first finger up enough to mute the thinner string there. Then we've got B and C sharp minor. And we can do all of those as a little kind of... You should be able to practice just uh, flicking off all the fingers to leave the, the bar and hammer on again. If you've never done that before, it's a good little exercise. Okay, now the very first time, you can see quite clearly when you watch him do it live that he's playing actually an A major 7 like this with the thumb over playing the bass note, fingers uh, 4, 3, 2 and 1 playing 7th fret, 6th fret, 5th fret and 4th fret. Okay, so little A major 7th chord. If you struggle with that, you could just go back down to playing your regular uh, A chord there, but if you want to get it a bit more exact, the Mark Knopfler one, first chord would be that, and it also appears that the second chord, just the very first time he does it, he, instead of playing a regular B, he's playing B with a D sharp bass. So first finger barring strings uh, 2, 3 and 4 at the 4th fret, and third finger playing the 6th fret on the 5th string. Okay not playing the outside two strings, okay? This is just the first time. So instead of going A, B, C sharp minor, he's going A major seven, B with a D sharp bass to C sharp minor, okay? Just the first time through. I'm probably just transitioning from the solo, but let's talk about now the, the whole chord progression. So we've got, it's the same for the intro solo and, and, and all of the verses all the way through. So we've got this A, B, C sharp minor, two, three, four, A, B, C sharp minor, two, three, four, and again, A, B, C sharp minor, two, three, four, last time, A, B to G sharp minor, okay, six string root bar chord, uh, you know, E minor kind of a shape, okay, so that's really important that you get that first of all, that that's what the chords are. Next thing I would recommend, have a go at doing the little, see if you can get used to doing this hammer on and flick off there with fingers two, three, and four. Okay, he's not doing it like that, of course, but you need to have that kind of a skill set before you can try a... just noticed here I'm playing the B chord like that so some of you are gonna go well what are you doing you showed us to play B like that so probably I recommend most times that people play a B chord using fingers one and three and a little mini bar with the fourth finger it just so happens that my little finger when I hold my hand like that on the fingerboard that my little finger is exactly the right length and by popping the third finger on top I've got a really nice way of playing that kind of A-shaped bar chord using my little finger sandwiched underneath my third finger, okay? I've, I have seen guys, I can't do it, but just using first and fourth like that as well. It's really uncomfortable for me, and this is one of those kind of things where as you progress as a guitar player, you're going to find the way that works for you. So uh, if, you, if you want to play B like that, that's totally fine. If you want to have a go at using your little finger like that too, you know, it's completely up to you um, to try those different things. So. As you can see, it's just those chords really and a little bit of hammer on and flick offs there. So really the, to get that rhythm pattern right is all down to the strumming hand. So the, 
you can see here that my hand almost looks like it's strumming but it's very much playing the bass notes on one and three and first finger doing a little strum there and controlling how it's played. Now because I've got fake plastic fingernails on, uh, on my fingers, my thumb one's just broken off, it's normally there as well, but it, it's making a little bit of a this sort of cr sharp crispy sound. I don't, don't really like that sound in this uh, for this particular uh, tune and, and I think if I didn't have the plastic nail it wouldn't be anywhere so uh, well, crunchy and standing out in a funny kind of a way. So probably you won't have that that problem for you. But uh, just thought to explain where that uh, that sound is coming from. But the basic pattern is this idea of strumming and two and one, two and three and four and one, two and three and four and so thumb down up, thumb up down up, thumb down up and the down up I'm just using my first finger as a little kind of a little strum movement with the first finger thumb down up thumb up down up thumb playing the bass note of the chord just the bass note of the chord it's kind of maybe not just the bass note but the bass strings definitely kind of focusing on the the lowest note of the chord so let's look at that just staying on the A chord and I'm going to talk about the muting more in a second because it won't quite sound yet right yet there's uh, something else going on one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two. Thumb, down, up, thumb, up, down, up, thumb, down, up, thumb, up, down, up. That's the motion that you really want to get before you start having a go at mixing in with the chords because all that's happening really to make it sound right is lifting up the chords to create a little bit of mute. So if I play the actual riff now, you watch this and exactly very strictly the pattern but if you check out St Martin Offaly you'll see that it's definitely all about the thumb playing on beats one and three and then these little strums with the first finger so start off with that start with that little one two and three and four and one two and three and four and start with that pattern first of all and then see if you can develop that along with the rhythm so the final connection that you need to make now is between this kind of rhythm pattern and the way that some of the strings are muted and the chords are kind of cut short. So again, I'll just play the riff for you. See if you can uh, spot the way that it's kind of changed a little bit. It's not quite, if you just did those chords and that rhythm pattern, it's not going to sound right. See if you can spot what's going on. Now what's really important is that you notice if I do it slowly, chord, mute, mute, bass, chord, mute, chord, bass, chord. Okay, we got little things where pick, hammer, pick, hammer. Okay, pick, hammer, pick, hammer, bass, mute, mute, bass, chord, bass. Okay, and that little click there, sorry I said bass, but it was just a little click. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and... See that, that chord, that's happening on the and after four. Really important that you notice that. One, two, and three, and four,
So once you got through that, it's time to look at the chorus, which is this part. Three, four. some nice stuff going on here as well so uh, we're starting off with an A chord hey this is uh, nothing on the thicker string then open 11th fret with the third finger 9th fret with the first finger 10th fret with the second finger and an open E string which may or may not be there it's hard to tell because this note is the same note as the open E string so it's hard to tell if it's in there or not sometimes I convince myself it was sometimes I uh, convinced myself it wasn't so up to you. So it's the first thing. You're going to play that chord, then you've got this lovely lick. It's kind of complicated, it's still a little difficult under the fingers this, but uh, I'll try and explain it as best I can. So we're starting off with a 12th fret on the thinner string, then we play it again and we flick off to the 11th fret with the 3rd finger, and then to the 1st finger on the 9th fret. Now, first finger has now got to roll from the ninth fret over onto the ninth fret of the second string, and little finger will then hammer onto the twelfth fret. Then we play the eleventh fret on the third string, then the ninth fret on the second string, making sure that you leave your first finger a little flatter than normal, so it can roll over onto the ninth fret of the third string, then hammer on the third finger in the eleventh fret, Again, that should be slightly flatter than usual, so it can roll over onto the 11th fret of the 4th string. Okay, this is already uh, probably starting to sound a little complicated. Let me start again from the beginning, nice and slowly. Okay, that's as far as we got. But then we've got 1st finger in the 9th fret of the G string, on the 3rd string that is, and then 9th fret on the fourth string, so you can see another one of these rolling motions where you have to start with the first finger a little flatter, roll it onto the ninth fret, hammer on the eleventh fret, that's now got to roll again onto the eleventh fret of the fifth string, ninth fret on the fourth string, eleventh fret on the fourth string, you're going to leave that there while you strum again. Okay, let me play that whole lick for you nice and slow. And again, 12, 12, 11, 9, 9, 12, 11, 9, 9, 11, 11, 9, 9, 11, 11, 9, 11, and then the chord again. The count for that is all eighth notes except for the very first little twiddle. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, three, four, one, and a two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four, and again, two, three, four, one, and a two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. Okay, lovely lick. Okay, then the second part, it's holding that same A chord again there, letting it ring out for two bars. Next, it's going to C sharp minor. If you wanted to play the chord, it's kind of sitting there already if you lay your first finger down flat on the thinnest three strings and put your third finger in the 11th fret of the fourth string. You've got a little C sharp minor there. It's not played on the record, but uh, I think it sounds nice, especially seeing as the lick starts on beat two. There's definitely space for one if you wanted to put that little C sharp minor on beat one. Then we're starting the actual lick that you'll hear on the record is the 12th fret on the second string, third finger, tone bend. Then you play it again, release it. And then flick the third finger off to the ninth fret. Okay, so from the bend, play, release, flick off. Then hammer on, flick off, hammer on, flick off. Okay, a lot of legato there. 
hardly any picking at all. So you've got the bend, pick, release, flick, hammer, flick, hammer, flick. Then the 11th fret on the 3rd string tone bend, release, then 9, 11, 9 on the 3rd string hammer on a flick off. And then we got this last lick. I'm not 100% certain this is what he's doing because it's lost in the mix just a little bit, uh, but this is my best guess. So uh, starting with the 1st finger in the 9th fret of the 5th string, sliding it up a tone to the 11th fret then 11th fret on the 4th string and then back, but you wouldn't move the finger. Just kind of lay your first finger over and then put it back on the point. Then I think it's 14, uh, 14th fret on the 4th string, that is, and it's bouncing back to that note again a couple of times. Usually three times it's hitting that and going back, except last time it's flicking off there from the 14th fret to the 11th fret again. And then twice more that note is picked. And then there's one of those little glisses. No idea where exactly where it starts from, but you know, up there somewhere, play the thicker string, slide it down and you're going to start your rhythm for verse 2. So let me play that chorus for you nice and slowly all the way through. So we're starting off with the A, so three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and a two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, Three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, and a one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four. Okay, so let's have a little look at the strumming hand as well. Uh, for the chords, generally I tend to use my thumb. Okay, I think Martin Offler uses his thumb or his first finger. Uh, you could choose to frame that first chord as well and go down, up, down with the last drum happening on the beat. So one, two, three, four, and a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, for this kind of run, the fingering that I'm using seems to be changing a bit. As soon as I tried to slow it down and uh, check what I was doing to explain it to you, I was doing it different every time. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to let you just figure out what it is that works for you because uh, it, 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 my logic tells me that every time when there's two strings together that I should be using my first finger on one and the thumb on the other, but it just doesn't seem to be working like that. That's kind of what I think it should happen, but uh, now it seems to be getting consistent. But just try it and see what kind of works for you there. Uh, definitely remembering to keep that part of palm of your hand there on the strings as well to stop uh, notes ringing out that you don't want to ring out. A big port important part of this sort of style is keeping control of that. C sharp minor. Okay, most of that's just going to be thumb kind of muting all of the strings that aren't being played and first finger. In fact, first finger plays all of that. Last line. Thumb, one thumb, one thumb, one thumb, thumb flick, one, one. And then the thumb for the little rundown. Uh, you know, whichever way you want to do it. Well, we're about halfway now. The big deal for this lesson is to really make sure that you get that rhythm part right, that you've got used to doing the thumb going, you know, the, the thumb on beats one and three and strumming with your first finger, because really kind of locking into that groove and making it feel nice is very, very important. Again, you should definitely be practicing this along with the original recording, just to really kind of suck in that time feel, you know, because it's not, it's not just the maths, there's more to it than that, and playing along with the original recording will really kind of help you 
help you pick that up. Uh, and in the next lesson, we're going to be looking at the next verse and the chorus and the bridge as well, because there's a few fancy licks in that and uh, actually some really, some really cool licks in that one. So I hope you join me for that. And uh, please remember to subscribe if you dig what I do. And I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye bye.